working? Are we working today, microphone? Yes. Okay, good. I'm always paranoid about this. After the times that it has not worked super great. So, hopefully. Hopefully, I don't have any of those problems today. I'm going to adjust my lighting a little bit because it's in my face. All right, so today I am working on the drawing for an illustration for another skirmisher project. Well, the same skirmisher project I've been working on, but it's a new drawing. Um, so this is going to be for the footsteps of Hercules again, and it's an illustration of the head is totally washed out in the light. Better? the Mycenae Hostel. So it's at the room, which, um, you know, the, the, the famous lion gate and the giant cyclopean walls. It's like a world heritage site, which is good because there's lots of really good reference for it. So that's my little, my word, what are we doing? That's my little thumbnail of what this is supposed to look like. So hopefully I can make that happen. Kind of perch that over here where I can see it. Okay, stay. Stay. And I already did my perspective grid because... Come on, light. I think issues getting my camera to cooperate with my lighting situation. It's a very gray day here, which is not helping. Okay, we might have to do it like this and see if that works. It's a gray, rainy day here. It's not helping matters. Okay. So yes, this is one of those things where uh, I think it's supposed to be over just a little more. This is the type of ruins at Mycenae, or Mycenae, or however you want to say it. I'm sure there's an actual way to say it in Greek. I just am an uneducated American. Get some of these basic shapes in. There's the... Here's the wall, going up this way. There's lots of like, like there's lots of these little walls and like half walls and then like earthworks all over the place. So it's kind of, it's a ruin of like an ancient city. And if you ever check out like some of the like aerial views and stuff of what's left of the city, it's really fascinating. There's some really cool reconstructions of it too. Yes, I know it looks like I'm not really following my perspective grid, but it is also like a curving path, so. Another wall here. All right. I feel like I need this 
wrong. So let's fiddle with that a little bit more. Lions are pretty tall. Okay, so there's the basic layout of what's going on in this place. So we've got our lion's gate, where this is from inside the walls of the city. So there's the lion's gate, there's the big outer wall, you've got a little bit of earthworks here, and this little half wall here, and another ruined half wall here. This is the big approach. So now I gotta start adding in my little stick figures. So this gate is 10 feet tall. So a six foot tall person would come up to about there. We Just a tiny little stick figure by the time this is done. That's okay. Oh, that would make that person like seven feet tall. So they need to be a little shorter if they're greeting right inside the door there. And I wanted to add a little offering alcove here. Like a little alcove with there be an icon in there. Bowl for offerings. No, that head's going to be too big because I want this figure to be from here to here ish. So, a much smaller head. I made the figures too big in my thumbnail, which is fine because it made the thumbnail more readable, but it's not, not accurate to reference that at this point. of figures come up the path here. These are a couple of our party members from our playtest sessions, actually. Well, one current party member, one former party member, fortunately, our one party member this, for this character over here on my right is no longer with us. been trying to incorporate his character in a few different pieces as like a nice little memorial for him. We have a tree over here. Another tree on the other side. Like some rock 
rocks and rocks and stuff. Rocks and shrubs and stuff. We need a few more fibers over here. A little cooking fire that's going on here. There's going to be a cooking pot over here. And like a little stand. This figure's be not quite so big. They're a little further back. I want to make pot a little higher up. That seems inconvenient below for this lady. It should at least be at like waist height. There. It's a little stand. That's a lot better. the footsteps of Hercules, the campaign that we're, we've been playtesting for Skirmisher here that it's already like a preliminary one of it is published and it'll get updated as we finish adding more of this content, like my illustrations and adding some more in the ruins of Mykini. It's supposed to be a hostel for travelers to come and stay. And they, people, volunteers who run the hostel will serve you food and give you somewhere safe to rest for the night. There's like a stack of bowls over on this wall that they're using as like a prep paste. All right, so that's the basics of what I'm gonna have in here. Oh, one more thing I'm gonna add for my Basic beginning here is the skyline. I have a reference image up on my computer that I'm looking at just out of frame here. Because there's a mountain range where those mountain peaks are is like something that like if you've been to Mykini then you know where like it's a it's a it's a view you would recognize basically all right so that's gonna be all the basic roughed in version of what I'm doing here so I'm gonna start big cyclopean stones of this wall. Piece of eraser or something stuck to the back of my paper? Gross. That is not a straight line, line down. I don't know what that was. Get 
rough shapes of these big stones. Some little like weathering and add a little like bit out of the side of this one. Another little divot over here. These rocks are all big and crazy and uneven. We've got some, oh, I think I need to sharpen my pencil. Shrubbery grown grass and shrubbery grown right next to the door there. I'm gonna sharpen my pencil real quick. Kind of dull. Some more brush going on. Actual door. It looks like we've got. old blocks here. So roughly now I don't want to get too committed to like even lines because that's not really how these walls built, the stones are a little bit more irregular than that. They're not always perfectly even. And that's part of the character of these types of walls and this type of architecture. These weird shaped rocks and weird combinations that just somehow work out. fun exercise like breaking up the space into different kinds of shapes and not just defaulting to the regular like brick fading evenly spaced brick pattern like you usually do when you do these type of things. I am this gate. Let me pull up so we've got a little center podium that they're kind of perching on. And then there's this big, like, center column. So the real lion's gate, the, it's just like a relief. And like it's just carved into the front as a relief. But we wanted to do something cool and make it seem like 
they were um, actual three-dimensional sculptures, which is not what they actually look like, but we thought would be cool. so that you can actually see the back side of them. see their little shoulders in the back of their little lion heads. And of course, also the ruins at Mykini, there are no heads on the lions. And so we also decided to take artistic license and make it one male lion and one female lion where in original you don't have any idea if they're male or female lions because they don't have heads so you don't know what their manes or lack thereof should look like. Something that would be fun is just like, yeah, what do we want it to be? What do we want to have this place be like? They do have very strange, like, elongated forms, though. They're kind of, they're kind of weird shaped. In actual fact, I'm gonna get back to my other reference I was looking at for the inside of the gate. For what is essentially this angle that I'm doing here. That a little bit. All right. Too crazy doing a lot of detail on this little bitty figure. You're not going to see too much of them. A track coming in the gate. The This guy welcoming people. Again, not going to get too detailed because he's so itty bitty. He's so tiny. so slightly. Mm -hmm. 
Okay. I feel like those guys might still be a little tall. Hmm. I might have to mess with that a little bit later. All right, I'm gonna do these guys further up here. because they're gonna be blocking some of that wall. Firm up some of my choices about this guy's apparel. wearing a big round pilgrim's hat. There's a name for them. I don't remember what it is. A walking stick. What's happening with that hand? What is that hand doing? I don't know what I'm even drawing there. Back on. One hand kind of hooked in the strap of his pack. Pretty sure that he's supposed to have like a 
fancy trim on his chitin. I'm not positive, but I think I drew that on him earlier. Unlike with the city builder project, we, we didn't have like a, a really set like party that I was referring for all of had the kind of like constant practice drawing them like I did with all of the city builder stuff. Every image, at least one of the party members and I had like style sheets for them. So they always look the same. We had this cool, this character had this cool lion helm that he had bought. Like a bronze lion helm. It was pretty sweet. So that's what he's wearing. Because why would you not wear that if you had it? I forget what the, I made the back of it look like. Let me see if I can find it. Scroll through my reference until I find it. Oh, there it is. Wait, I made it a... I gave it an actual, like... main which is on top of the on top of the actual metal helmet there's also made from actual fibers possibly from an actual lion's mane why not He's using an actual, like, spear for his walking stick. And... Like a hip bag. He's wearing a shield on his back. Man, it's like anytime you start getting into adventure, actual adventurer characters, it's like, oh yes, adventurers are always carrying around so much crap. Which, yes, makes sense. They're adventuring. They're living on the road and expecting to fight things, but it's just like, good grief. Why are you even keeping all of this? How are you looking around with this much stuff on?
there's that's that character's name is Anaclus. Let's see. What do I have for Oh, that's right. Abderos is supposed to be where he... Goodness. Again. These darn adventurers. Too much stuff all the time. Alright, I'm just gonna have the sword sticking out back there. Okay, I guess that's gonna do for these guys. So. so now I can come back here, work on this wall a little bit, clean up some of my scribbly scribbly lines where I was very non-committal about where the edges of this wall were going to be. Hey, hey. You should watch it on a larger screen than your phone. I think you'll see more that way. Hello, Jay. It's uh, the ruins of Mykene. It's inside the fortress. So that's the, the lion's gate right there. And so do, these are the great big cyclopean walls. Why? <laughs> I just realized that the speakers were not turned off on my desktop. So that was fun. All right. So, oh, dang it. Now I need to get back to me. Now I'm done with those characters. I need to get back to my other, back to my reference image. There we go. Okay. I'll do some, some grass growing along the wall like it does. Okay. Give me a second. I'll remember how geometry works here. This extremely squashy thing that's supposed to be a cube. There we go. So we have these big, weird Let's start on the corner here. And this right here is more grass. More little shrubby bits, places where the earthwork has just kind of gone wild. Their little like bits of rock, or like maybe there was something else built here at some point, and now it's just kind of gone. Okay, so there's that edge. Build this up from the bottom again, like we did before. But again, the walls are not like even brick. There are lots of large, irregular stones that were just kind of fit together with a minimum of interference. 
which if you've ever even tried to build like a simple stone wall, you will realize is a pretty significant. And we fit all of these irregular shapes together. Keep it from getting too regular looking. All right. Got the lower edge of this wall. Put a couple more little bits of stuff. And we're gonna have our little alcove here. Make one little I'm going to get this, those are getting a little too even. I'm going to get some height variation going on in here. Make that a little bit bigger. There we go. That's a little better. Also, my wall is like leaning. Why are we leaning? I find that that actually happens a lot in one point perspective is that you end up like, for whatever reason, you end up kind of leaning the vertical axis of plum. Like you just start kind of everything just starts kind of listing in one direction or another and it's a lot harder to catch because you don't have like two intersecting lines two sets of intersecting lines you don't have as many cues that you're going wonky <laughs> like you only have the edges of the edge of the edges of the paper you don't have that other set of lines to make it look like wait 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 hang on something's wrong here so it's very easy to accidentally start going a little bit leany which is not what i want to do because if your lines start leaning then i've got, see i've got it going on all over over here i gotta fix this if you start doing that then it really messes with the perspective it really messes with things looking like they're as 
real and conforming to the perspective illusion that you're trying to make as they should be. So there, that should fix that a little bit. That looks water. It was all, my wall was listing. <sighs> it just kind of happens sometimes. Gotta watch out for. All right, that's that wall. I feel like that's still not quite, doesn't doesn't look to be forming to my perspective as well as a little better. All right, so right in here, I'm gonna sharpen the pencil real quick. So I'm gonna make my little bowl for offerings. This little alcove will have an icon in it, which again, you can't see it super well, but gives you the idea of what it is. Here's the... There we go. A little alcove with the icon and bowl for offerings, which is pretty standard. We've got more grass around time. 52 minutes, so I'll start telling you guys the thing, because I usually try to keep these streams to just about an hour. So, I'm Amanda Cole. This is my YouTube channel where I draw things. I've got all sorts of different videos about making art, time lapses, uh, process videos, and I do these little live streams, usually about once a week. Things have been kind of crazy here recently, so I've missed a little bit, but I'm trying to get back on track. So if you like any of that, then go ahead and subscribe, like the video, let people know that you found a cool art channel, go check it out. You can also find me on Twitter at Age of Night and Instagram at Amanda Call Art. I have a weekly webcomic. Very often I'm working on those webcomic pages, but right now I'm point in a chapter where everything that I'm working on is spoilery, so I just have to work on some other stuff on the stream until I get past all the spoilery bits. But you can check out my webcomic at Age of Night, that's A-G-E-O-F-N-I-G-H-T. And I also have a Patreon. So if you think I'm doing some awesome work, then you can support my pound.com slash Age of Night. And that's pretty much, I think that's pretty much all the things that I have to tell you. Normally I would tell you about coming appearances, but of course there are none of those. No upcoming appearances. No upcoming nothing. Last convention that had been tentatively scheduled for 
October finally canceled, which, I mean, obviously we all knew was coming, but they finally officially, well, okay, according to them, they rescheduled. They rescheduled for the time that they would have had the spring event next year, which is not rescheduling. It's canceling because it's an annual event, but whatever, I digress. I understand everybody's in a rough position there, so you do got to do make yourself feel better about that. <laughs> if you want to say that you rescheduled your annual event to next year, you go for it. <laughs> a little silly, but whatever. All right, so let's see. Well, I start with just having a perspective and otherwise nothing on this piece of paper. Plus I have my little thumbnail that I'm that I'm using to as my guide for what I'm drawing. I'd say it's coming along pretty well. Um, and yeah, I'm pretty close to being done with the pencils on this. So that was an hour well spent and hopefully next week you'll be able 